Hey guys, Aaron here. Today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to replace a clock spring or spiral cable in a Nissan car, truck, or SUV. And what we're experiencing with this vehicle is when you go to push the horn button down, you don't get any horn operation at all. We get an airbag light flashing and I was able to pull code B1049 out of the airbag control module, uh, which definitely indicates that we have an issue with our spiral cable. Now there's other symptoms that you can experience when the spiral cable or clock spring goes bad. Um, some of your cruise control buttons won't work. You might get some other diagnostic trouble codes out of your airbag control module and some of the radio functions. If you have that option on your vehicle, they might not work as well. Now overall, the job's not too difficult. However, there are a couple important procedures that we need to go over. So before we go into that, let's go ahead and go over the parts and tools we need to get the job done. So as far as tools go, we'll need a 10 millimeter socket, a 19 millimeter socket, a quarter inch extension and a half inch extension. We need a Phillips head screwdriver, a quarter inch ratchet, a half inch ratchet, a small pick, or a uh, set of pliers just to help us remove some of the electrical connectors. We're also gonna be using a torque wrench to properly torque the steering wheel back into place. And of course, we're going to need a new spiral cable assembly here directly from Nissan. This is a brand new OE Nissan part directly from the dealer. If you do go to a junkyard to buy a spiral cable off of a vehicle or online, make sure you get a spiral cable assembly from a vehicle that has the same options as yours. And by that, I mean the fog lights and stuff like that. This truck does have fog lights. And as you can see, we have an option for the fog lights on this uh, left hand switch here. First thing that we need to do and one of the most important steps here is to disconnect the battery and let the vehicle sit for about three minutes. We're gonna be handling the airbag and the airbag is very dangerous. We need to make sure that there's absolutely no power in the vehicle before we do anything. All right, so it's been about three minutes since we disconnected the uh, battery from the vehicle. Now it's time to go ahead and remove the airbag. Um, on both sides of the steering wheel, you're gonna have a little plastic trim piece. We're just gonna pop that off and it's gonna expose one single 10 millimeter bolt that we need to remove. Some of the newer Nissan or Infinities, you'll have a little spring that you have to depress. Um, it's a lot easier, but go ahead and get in there with a 10 millimeter socket, and we're gonna loosen up that bolt and do the same thing to the passenger side. All right, so with both bolts removed from the airbag and the steering wheel, let's go ahead and just pop off our um, airbag. We're gonna remove a single ground that's on the driver's side. And there's two connectors on the back side here. We're gonna take our pick and we're just gonna pick up this little metal piece and then these connectors will come right off. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and put this on the workbench. It's important to note when you're uh, storing your airbag, always store it on this side here. We don't wanna store it face down because if something happens, it goes off. We're gonna have a lot of metal going upwards. We want it stored like this. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, it's time to make sure that the steering wheel is perfectly center and we need to remove our connectors for our switches. If you have radio controls, you're gonna have a switch right here that, or a connector right here that you need to remove. But since we only have cruise control in this model, we're just gonna be removing one single connector right there. Now we're ready to loosen the nut on the steering wheel that holds the steering wheel on. We're gonna be using a 19 millimeter socket and we're just gonna loosen it up about five or six threads, uh, allowing us just to get the steering wheel unpressed from the shaft. All right, so it's loosened up. Now we can go ahead and just rock it back and forth and the steering wheel should unpress from its shaft. There we go. So remove the nut. Now very carefully, we need to feed the connectors for the spiral cable and the airbag through. Now 
Now, once that's done, we need to remove both trim pieces, the upper and lower trim pieces for the steering column here. We're gonna be doing that by removing a couple screws on the bottom by using a Phillips head screwdriver. So the screws are out. Now we need to remove the column adjuster here. Um, there's actually a little tang inside of this little handle right here that we're gonna depress. And when we do that, we'll feel a little bit of tension upwards. We could press out this adjuster. All right, now we're ready to remove both trim pieces. We're just gonna simply pry off the upper, take down the lower. On some models, you'll need to remove this bottom kick panel piece here, but we have pr uh, plenty of clearance on this thing to uh, just remove this. So there's two connectors that we need to remove in order to get this uh, spiral cable off. One's for the airbag, another one's I'm guessing for the controls, it's gray, the other one's yellow. Let's just go ahead and depress the tank and we're gonna take these connectors outward. All right, so once that's done, there's two screws that hold the spiral cable to the column. Let's go ahead and remove those. And there's one tab that's directly on top here. We're just gonna depress it and we can remove everything. There's one more connector up on top here. All right, so here's the brand new part from Nissan. And when you purchase a brand new spiral cable, it's gonna come already centered and it's gonna come locked. This is just a the little plastic piece that locks it in place to make sure it doesn't move when we're installing it. So we know that this unit is centered, which is nice. If you buy a used part online, chances are you're gonna have to make sure it's centered before you install it. The reason is that there's only so many rotations that this thing can do before uh, it breaks. So we need to make sure that the steering wheel is centered and this is centered and that's very important so we don't break the spiral cable. Uh, to make sure it's centered, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make sure that this is directly north, okay? And we're gonna spin it two times to the left. And we're gonna get about another three quarters of a spin before we get some tension. Don't pull too hard, but um, that's, that's all the way to the left. Take that piece and put it directly north again. And we're gonna go two times to the right and that's back to center, okay? We're gonna go right again two times and then we're gonna get it about a three quarters or actually a quarter of a turn there and that is all it moves to the right. We're gonna take this north again and we're gonna go two times to the right and that's back to center. And we can confirm that by spinning it two more times uh, to the right and then a three quarters of a turn. So um, that's just a little, little, little trick there just to make sure you're fully centered. So let's go ahead and install this new part and put everything back together. All right, so here's the new unit. We're gonna start off by putting the top connector in. It's a little bit difficult to get into when it's installed. All right, make sure that this is properly seated. Get that top clip in. Now we can tighten down both screws that hold the spiral cable to the steering column. Now let's get both connectors underneath the column plugged in. So now that that's done, let's go ahead and put our trim pieces around our steering column. Remove this plastic clear piece that locks our spiral cable. And we're just gonna guide the uh, connectors through very carefully.
Now this part's pretty important. Make sure you note the little scribe piece, this little indentation on the shaft of the steering column, and it matches up with the dot that's directly north on the, um, the steering wheel here. There we go. As you can see the matchup. Go ahead and plug our cruise control buttons in. And again, if you have radio controls, they'll go right there. Once the nut is hand tight, we're gonna go ahead and take our torque wrench and torque it down to 25 foot pounds. Now we're ready to take our airbag and install it. Let's start with the two connectors on the back. We're just gonna push them in. And then we're gonna take the black piece and push it downwards. Now we can take our two screws and put them in the back side of the steering wheel. All right, so we got our battery reconnected, everything's back into place and the job is complete. However, we're still gonna have the light flashing, uh, the airbag light flashing until we clear it. There's two ways to do that. You could take a uh, you know bi-directional scanner that can communicate with the airbag control module and we could reset the light that way or we could do a manual reset. Now the procedure for a manual reset is pretty simple. We're gonna turn the ignition on. We're not gonna start the vehicle. We're gonna turn it on and we're gonna allow the light to go out. Initially, the light will be on. It'll take a couple seconds. The light will go out. We're going to take the keys out of the ignition. We're going to turn off the ignition. We're going to wait five seconds and we're going to do it again. We're going to turn the ignition on, wait for the light to come on, and then it'll go out. We take the key out of the ignition or turn the ignition off and we repeat that one more time. After that third time, we're going to turn the ignition on and it's going to be in diagnostics mode. You're going to see the light will flash a lot slower and we're going to let it sit there for about 10 seconds. After that's complete, we'll take the keys out of the ignition or turn the ignition off again and we will uh, turn the ignition on five seconds later and the light should be out for good after that. So let's go ahead and go through that. All right, so we're gonna turn the ignition on. You can see the light up here is on. We're gonna wait for it to go out and turn the ignition off. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. There, the light is out. Let's turn it off again. One, two, three, four, five. Here's the third time. One, two, three, four, five. Now it should be in diagnostics mode and it's gonna blink a lot slower than it did before. All right, and the light is reset. Let's go ahead and start the vehicle and make sure the light stays off. Alright, so the light is off and that pretty much completes this repair guys. I hope this video has helped you out. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave something in the comment section. Uh, make sure to check out the links in the description for the parts and tools I use during this video. Thanks again as always guys. See you next time.